Hi friends, David here from Above AVL and Learn Stage Lighting. And in this video, we're taking a look at LED tapes and pixels and how we can incorporate them, not only into our designs lighting wise, so that you could do cool DIY stuff in a music venue or church or something like that, but also how to control them and how to meaningfully actually control them and what we think about when we're controlling pixels. Let's dive in. Okay, so have you ever done this? Maybe you have. You're in a venue or a church or something like that. This happens a lot in the church world. And somebody goes, ooh, we're going to do this really cool either project with a whole bunch of LED tape, right, like this. Or we're going to do this project with these pixel nodes, you know, make this really cool big grid with them and run animations on. And, you know, somebody gets excited about it. And then you go, oh, my goodness. Like, you know, whether it's natural to you or not, all of a sudden you're using electrical meters, you're stripping wire all the time and all that jazz. And it just becomes a huge headache, right? So this video is really gonna talk about how not to make it a huge headache, how to make it much easier on yourself. And we're gonna explore some of the hardware and software, especially in the next video, that you need to make it work great. To start off, let's do some definitions, okay. So with LED tape and pixels, there are a few terms you want to be aware of. The first thing you want to be aware of is what voltage is your pixel running at? Um, there are 5, 12, and 24 volt pixels. Often that's kind of the typical. And as I say, more volts, the better. Okay, some people say in the Christmas industry, mo volts, mo better. But I don't want to rip off their turf because it allows you to run further. But more voltage can have issues. With products like LED tapes, for example, on a 12 volt tape, you often don't have individual control of every LED. It's often every three pixels due to some heat concerns that arise in 12 volt tapes. With the pixel nodes, with stuff like these, it's gonna be different. So let's talk about those form factors. So when it comes to using pixels on your stage, you may have smart pixels, first of all, or what we call dumb, non-pixel. Non-pixel tapes or nodes, honestly, they can be worth your time, but I just feel like for what you get out of it, it's not near as exciting as pixel nodes, which can be actually not that expensive to get into and not that difficult to control, okay? So when we're looking at the form factors, there's going to be some different varieties, particularly of pixel-based stuff. If you're in non-pixel-based stuff, you're going to use different sets of hardware here. But today, I really want to focus on pixel-based stuff because I think there, there's good enough reasons to use it in most applications. When it comes to pixel-based stuff, a lot of people might be familiar with LED tape, right? It comes on these reels. You can cut it. Um, at defined cut points, sometimes that's every pixel, sometimes it's not. Usually there's a lot of wires and soldering and people getting angry about the soldering. And, you know, when you need a tape that has a really low profile, you know, in a space where, say, public people like a bar facade or something are, are touching, you know, tape is probably going to be your best and only bet. But it has a lot of downsides, right? It's kind of a pain in the butt to work with. It's less reliable. You've got to solder on these tiny little solder pads, which are really quite annoying, um, especially if you don't solder for a living, right? Like I used to, and so I'm pretty good, but I don't love it, right? The next types of form factors we have are what we call the Christmas light type pixels. Now, the Christmas light type pixels I love. So we run a channel over in the Christmas lighting world called Learn Christmas Lighting, and we specialize in this stuff because the Christmas light pixels use a form factor that actually come from the sign industry, okay? <clears throat> These are what everybody used to use, the bullet pixels, and they're still very popular, and that's what I've got in this prop behind me. We'll talk about these props in a second, okay? These are not bad, but they're quickly getting replaced with what we call our NBG pixels, which are a, dome, a white dome-like pixel that looks like this and is also on a string. Okay, so either way, you end up with a bunch of pixels on a string, and the way that you make them actually look like something is by putting them in a grid or a line or another shape. 
So for that, we'll turn to the Christmas light hobby vendors. Um, there are a few to be aware of. This one is made by a company called Boscoyo Studios, and it's just a really inexpensive plastic HDPE prop, they call it, that you can insert these pixels in. They have larger ones, they have smaller ones, etc. Some other brands to be aware of in that space are EFL Designs and Gilbert Engineering. Those are kind of the big ones. And they purely make props that either these NBG style pixels or these bullet style pixels push into. They also have things like these strips, which when you pull them vertically, make a nice tight strip of light. Now, uh, between these couple types of pixels, the MBG pixels are by far the easiest to push um, because they have a flat back, they push in a little easier, they're molded a little better. The bullets, you're gonna wear some gloves and it's gonna be painful, but you only have to do it once. Of course, if you're going with a strip, then you're gonna tape it somehow using mounting tape or something like that, affixing it to a surface and off you go to the races. The cool thing about Christmas light pixels is that in a stage capacity, you could take a strip like this and you could hang it from the front of a riser sideways and have some cool little animations going across it as a low res pixel display, right? You can put it behind your stage, behind your band and just you know run patterns on it, run stuff like that, okay? So how do we actually make this stuff work? Well, there's gonna be a few pieces of hardware that you're gonna need. Okay, so the pixels, first thing they're gonna do is they're gonna plug into a pixel controller. Okay, here is an NTEC Pixel Octo. This is the old version, which is a, surprisingly, it's honestly not that expensive of a pixel driver, and it can run a lot of pixels. So the Pixel Octo is a pretty good one. We also carry, and we'll carry in the future, and recommend the Genius controllers from a brand called Experience Lights. They have some big advantages as well, too. And what you're gonna do with a controller like this is you'll follow the wiring guides in the controller and, and sometimes different situations require different wiring. But with most controllers, on the Octo is a hair different, but with most controllers, you're gonna bring power into the controller and then you'll have what's called a pigtail. This is another huge benefit of the Christmas light style pixels that then uses a standardized plug called the X Connect. Okay, that's this, to plug into any of your pixel strings and then you just wire on through and off you go. So the benefit of this is that there's like, there's literally no soldering. You'll use a screwdriver to attach the pigtail to something like this Pixel Octo. You'll then bring in power. Again, some Pixel controllers allow you to power it through the Pixel controller. The Pixel Octos do not, but they do have the advantage of having free software with them for Pixel control called NTEX Elm software. So it's definitely worth taking a look at that. Once you've got a pixel controller and a pigtail, which we love because then you just literally can buy pre-made extensions and just go straight into anything with these X-Connect plugs. Next, you're gonna need a power supply. Okay, you're, you're gonna need to know the voltage of your pixels, okay, which is either gonna be five, 12, or 24 volt. And then you'll need to know the wattage and size of power supply accordingly. Of course, you kind of can never go too big with the power supply, but you know you want to be in the realm of the size that you need. Okay, um, power supplies, depending on your system, may wire straight to the pixels or wire through a controller, as I noted before. So once you've got that controller powered, you've got your pixels powered, they may need to be powered separately depending on the application, we're then going to go and get into some software. So you're going to have to control them somehow right? Um, top of mind, some of our best recommendations is either to use Onyx because the built-in Dialus pixel mapper is awesome, but also all of Entex pixel mappers, as I mentioned, use a program called ELM, e -L -M, which is their pixel mapping program. It's the easiest pixel mapping program I've ever seen on the market. You can control almost infinite amounts of pixels, more than you're going to use. And when you buy NTEC Pixel Octos, and again, you can get these from us, but you can also get other controllers, you actually get a Elm license equal to the total output of the Octo, which is an eight universe. You get an eight universe Elm license. So you can use Elm for free when you buy these Octos, which is a great thing. Even if you use a program like Onyx, using Elm as an intermediary can make sense and can be cheaper per universe if you're trying to save on some cost. It could do some really great things as well too. There are also, to be aware of, if you're not going the DIY route, we can look at pixel bars. So these are a pixel bar that we love here from, from Gamma, um, the Gamma Pixel Strip IP, and they have a variety of different lenses that you can put on them. And then you have full pixel control of that bar. Now those are a ready-made product. 
where you buy the you buy the strips, you buy the processor, everything plugs in ready made. It's going to be a totally different cost level than DIYing it. Of course it is. It's a fully assembled product, right? But that is something to be aware of as well. Devices like these Pixel strips from Gamma, they they have a driver that takes Artnet directly. You just send that from any lighting software. Entex, Elm, Onyx, whatever you'd like to use. Hopefully you've enjoyed this journey, just starting to look at what kind of pixels we can use in a show, in a event, whether it be a church or a band, really anything. And if you like this, then join us in our next video. We're gonna dive in and show you a real example of actually hooking all this stuff up, getting this thing rolling in a few different pieces of software so that you can understand how it works, so you can make it work for your particular circumstance. If that sounds good, then check out the next video. It'll be in this playlist, or if you're watching it live, it'll be next week. And when you need pixels, hey, we are your place. We've got them in stock almost year round, pretty much all the time at Above AVL. Around Christmas, it gets a little tight. And we have some great prices, really good quality pixels that are gonna work well for you and have a pretty low failure rate. So if that sounds good, check out all our pixels over at Above AVL, the huge benefit being, again, they've got these plugs in them, so you just wire things up, just plug stuff in, and it's a lot easier, no soldering, no mess, no fuss. In our next video, we're gonna go from the ground up, build this thing, get control, get it working. We'll dive in there, thanks.